Hello and welcome to a short series of videos about AC power. I'll start with a revision of power at DC and what power means in terms of the basic physical parameters that we've been discussing in the module so far. To go right back to our definition of work, work is force times the distance and work is measured in joules. Work is amount of energy which is transferred from one thing to another. For example, if I have this koosh ball here, then the koosh ball is pushing down on my hand with a force due to gravity. If I lift up my hand, I am doing work against that force, which means that I am losing energy. That energy is being stored in the gravitational field. If I then let the koosh ball drop, the koosh ball is losing energy, and that energy goes to, amongst other places, sound. Fundamental principle again is that energy is conserved, so if energy is being lost by one body, it must be being gained by another body or being stored in a field. When we think about the hydraulic analogy, which we use for electric circuits, then we tend to think about pressure rather than force. Pressure is the ratio of the force to the area over which the force is working. Or to put it another way, the force acting in a pipe is the pressure of the fluid in the pipe multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that pipe. Now, that means that if there's a cross-sectional area here of A square meters, then the force be pushing down on the pump is P1 times A, the pressure times the area. And if the pump is going to push water up into this pipe, then it has to do work against that force. If it's going to push the fluid up through a distance d into this pipe, so that all the fluid in this pipe moves up through a distance d, and a new amount of fluid arrives at the bottom of this pipe, then the total amount of work done is the force times the distance, that's just the pressure times the area times the distance, which in this case would be P1, the pressure in this pipe, multiplied by A, the cross-sectional area of the pipe, multiplied by D, the distance through which the fluid is moving in this pipe. And that's the energy that the pump has to give out to push this fluid up through this pipe. But that's not the energy that the pump requires from the external world in order to do this. Because as well as pushing fluid up through this output pipe, it's also taking fluid in through this input pipe. Now that fluid in this input pipe here has a pressure P0. And if the pipes on both sides have the same cross-sectional area, then the fluid in the bottom pipe will be pushing up and moving into the pump through a distance d as well. Which means that there is an energy being lost by the fluid in this pipe and being gained by the pump equal to the pressure of the fluid down here multiplied by the cross-sectional area and the distance it is moving. And that's energy lost by the fluid in the pipe at the bottom here. So we have energy that's required to be pushed into the pipe, P1 AD, and we have energy that is lost by the pipe, P0 AD. And it's only the difference between those two energies that the pump actually needs to source from whatever power supply the pump has. That gives us an expression for the net work done by the pump of P1 minus P0, the difference in the pressures on both sides, multiplied by the cross-sectional area times the distance. And there's one other simplification we can make to this formula before we move on, and that's to note that A, the cross-sectional area, times D, the distance through which the fluid has moved, is the volume of the fluid that has moved from one side of the pump to the other. So we could replace this A times D with just a V term, the volume of fluid that has moved. 
So we have this expression that the work being done by the pump is the difference in pressures on both sides of the pump multiplied by the volume of the fluid that has gone through the pump. Power is the rate of doing work, or if you like, the amount of work that is done in unit time. Well, dv dt, the rate at which the volume is going through, or if dv dt is constant, that's just equal to the volume that is going through in unit time, one second, that is by definition the flow rate. The flow rate is the amount of volume of fluid that goes through in a unit time. Now, I can represent the flow rate in the hydraulic analogy as the current, and the difference in pressures on both sides of the pump in the hydraulic analogy as the voltage difference. So that gives us this fundamental formula. The power is the change in voltage multiplied by the current. And if the current is going from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, then the component must be putting energy into the circuit. It must be something like a battery, a voltage source. But if the current is going from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, then that component is taking power or energy out of the circuit, something like a resistor getting hot with current flowing through it. This gives us the fundamental and very useful formula that power is the change in voltage times the current. Now when the component is a resistor, we also have the result from Ohm's law that the change in voltage across the resistor is the current flowing through the resistor times the value of the resistance R. And we can substitute in this formula into this formula and get two other expressions for power. Power is the change in voltage squared divided by the resistance, or the current squared times the resistance. But it's important to note that both of these formulas only apply to resistors. Whereas this formula, power equals the change in voltage times the current, applies to anything. Let's do a couple of examples. First example. What power is being dissipated in this resistor? Well, we can quickly see that the voltage across this resistor is just 4 volts, because the voltage source here is forcing this point here to be 4 volts above this point here. So we can immediately use one of those new formulas we've just derived. The power is the square of the voltage difference divided by the resistance. That would give us 4 squared over 2, which is 8 watts. So there is 8 watts being dissipated in this resistor. Next, what power is being provided by the current source? Now, this is perhaps a bit of a trick question, because the voltage across the current source is also 4 volts. The voltage source here is forcing this point here to be 4 volts above this point here. So the difference in voltage across the current source is 4 volts, and the current flowing through the current source is 1 amp. We know that because it's a 1 amp current source. That means that the power associated with this current source, delta V times I, 4 times 1, is just going to be 4 watts. However, that power is not being provided by the current source. That power is being dissipated by the current source. It's being removed from the circuit because that current is flowing from a higher voltage here at 4 volts to a lower voltage here, 4 volts below the point up here. If you've got current flowing from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, that's charge moving in the direction it wants to go. That's like something just dropping due to gravity. That's going to take energy out of the circuit. You only need to put energy into a circuit if you want to take charge and raise its potential. So that power is actually being lost by the current source. If I was asked what power is being provided by the current source, I would tend to say power provided is minus 4 watts. 
because it's four watts that's actually being lost. Final question. What power is being provided by the voltage source? Well, it's not a resistor, so we can't use any of those shortcut formulas. We have to go back to power equals the change in voltage times the current. What current is flowing through that voltage source? Well, we can apply Kirchhoff's current law to this circuit. We know that the current flowing down through the resistor will be two amps. We've also got one amp flowing down through the current source. Therefore, if we apply Kirchhoff's current law to this bottom node in the circuit here, the total current flowing in is two amps plus one amp or three amps. Therefore, the current flowing out, which must be flowing up through the voltage source, must be three amps. And the voltage source itself raises the potential by four volts. So the delta V is four, that is 12 watts. That voltage source is giving 12 watts into this circuit. I didn't actually need to do that calculation. I could have just used the fact that I know that energy is preserved. And therefore, if a certain amount of power is being put into the circuit, the same amount of power must be being removed from the circuit. I know that the power associated by the, with the resistor, the resistor is losing 8 watts of power. I know that the current source is losing 4 watts of power. I'll write that as 8 watts out and 4 watts out of the circuit. Well, if there's 8 watts plus 4 watts or 12 watts going out of the circuit, there must be something putting 12 watts into the circuit as well. And the only thing that can possibly be is the voltage source. So I could just have taken those two results, added them together and said the power being contributed by the voltage source must be 12 watts. We can check this on the simulator. For most components, if you do a control click, it shows you the current. So we can confirm that the current through our two ohm resistor is two amps and the current through our four volt voltage source is three amps. And a shift click will tell you about the power. Our two ohm resistor is dissipating eight watts. Our four volt voltage source is contributing 12 watts. Our one amp current source is contributing minus four watts, just as we would expect. Next time, we'll have a look at AC power, but AC power in resistors.